In this video, I am going to be talking about collaboration, and there are two types of collaboration. There is real time or overtime. And overtime is I've created this document, I can invite people to edit it. They might come in three weeks after I've shared it with them and make their changes. I might then go on like a day after they have, make some changes, and we could go on and on over time editing this single document. And we only have one version of the document, so it's not something that's being emailed. Everybody's coming to this single document to make their changes. We can also do editing in real time. And Google Documents is the best tool for this. It's very seamless. As long as people have a Google account, that's all they need to be able to get in and to edit your document. So earlier, I shared this file with Susan Stewart. And Susan Stewart is going to get online right now and access this document. And great, I can see her on my document now because now up at the top of my page, I've got this little avatar. And if I hover my mouse over it, I get a little window that has her name and it has her picture. And if there were more people, they would show up here as little squares as well. And if I had more people than there was room for, I would get a little drop down menu here with a list of all the avatars and people's names. So Susan is on this document. By default, when she joined the document, she ends up up at the top. And I'm going to have her go to the beginning of the first paragraph and I'm going to have her change her color so we can see her changes clearly. And I'm going to go into the second paragraph and I'm going to have my text show up as orange. And the only reason I'm having us change these colors is just so we can see for our training video the differences in who is typing. And notice here on my document that I've invited Susan to edit. As soon as she starts to type, look what happens. I get this little flag of her name that shows up. So I know who's typing. So that's handy if I have like five people on here, I can see who's doing what. And when I'm typing, my typing is in orange. And so Susan would be seeing my name show up. And we both can be editing at the same time. We don't have to wait for one person to finish before the other person can type. So if you are collaborating in real time, you are going to want to set some ground rules to make sure you aren't editing on top of each other because that would become a problem. So you know, whether it's agreement about who's going to be doing the editing at any point in time, or maybe you're dividing the document up into separate paragraphs that you're going to edit, fine, whatever rules you come up with. But it's just nice to know that you both can come out here, make your changes. You can jump around the document so you can see Susan's little flag is moving around. That's because on her computer, she is clicking her mouse in different places. And also, even when she highlights text, I can see what she's highlighted. So that's not anything I've done. That's all work that she has done. And she can even come down to where I'm at, which is down here, and you know, she can highlight that and talk to me about something that I'm working on. And since Susan is an editor, she can make all kinds of edits. She can delete text if she wants. She can add in new text. And it all works seamlessly. Now, if at any point I'm like, oh, no, like I just am not really happy with those edits that Susan made, and I can go back up to my revision history, see revision history, and I can pull an earlier version. I can, I can just kind of go back in time. So let's say here I want to kind of go back to my original. So I'm going to restore that version. So it doesn't matter, even if you have someone in here with full editing privileges, you're not going to completely lose your work if you're worried about that because you always have your revision history to save you. And that's document collaboration.